Closing in on 4 million votes so far kind of sounds like a big number, but both candidates for governor are concerned with low turnout. So Governor Abbott and Beto O'Rourke are both spending the final days pushing to get their supporters to the polls. And as we look ahead to Election Day on Tuesday, bacon will play a big part in Texas's political future. Nope, not the food. I got to sit down with senior political reporter Jason Whiteley. I'll let him explain. I swear this is not a shameless plug, but I was listening to a recent episode of Yalitics, and there was something about bacon. You guys were drinking beer. We weren't <laughs> was, eating bacon, though. You weren't. You weren't. You were. There was a reason you were talking about bacon. I, I, explain this so, to folks about yeah, what is happening. Yeah, there there are three congressional districts that run from San Antonio Corpus down to the Rio Grande River, and they're little narrow strips that have been kind of gerrymandered out. They look like little strips of bacon. Each of these three congressional districts, members of Congress from Texas, they've been Democratic districts forever. And one of them just flipped to a Republican district, Myra Flores. She represents the, the area between Brownsville and Corpus Christi. That one flipped in the special election, but it was redistricted as a Democratic district. So the thinking was, that's fine, she can have it, Myra Flores can have it in the special election because Democrats, Vicente Gonzalez, the Democrats are gonna come back and win this race. Well. That's not really panning out to be true because Myra Flores is really increasing her lead. So you have a district that was Democratic plus 15, solid. Now it looks like it might be a Democratic or a toss-up, Democratic plus one or two or a toss-up. That's going to be a really close race there. The other two districts are districts that have traditionally been Democratic, but you have Democrats going in and voting for the Republican in these races. Here's the problem with this. If one, two, or all three of these Democratic districts in South Texas, these congressional districts, if they flip to Republican, that makes it even harder for any Democrat to win statewide races for years to come. Democrats cannot afford to lose any single piece of ground in the state, much less a solid blue wall like South Texas. If they lose one or two or three of these Democratic congressional seats in South Texas, that's gonna spell trouble for them for years to come. So you can imagine both parties are watching that particular area very closely. And tomorrow on Daybreak, Jason and I will take a look at the close races to watch as we head into Election Day. And I know polling shows some pretty wide margins, but we're looking at a couple of particular races with a lot of undecided votes potentially on the line. So make sure to join us Tuesday for live election coverage on election night. Senior political reporter Jason Whiteley will lead our coverage on WFA.com. That all kicks off at 6.50. You know, polls close at 7. And if you have Roku or Fire Stick, you can watch on our WFAA Plus streaming app. Thanks again to Brood Limited and Bishop Arts for letting us film.